I come back to the book people, where I interview people whose lives and careers revolve around books. I'm your host Ashwarya, and this is the final episode of season one of this podcast. So today we're going to talk about books in the digital format, like e-books and audio books. So I personally have always loved buying physical print books because I love books that I can hold in my hands, and I love their sort of new book smell and when you get to crack the spine. But over the last few years, I've also slowly started getting into e-books and audio books, especially during the pandemic. And of course, there have been a lot of conversations about these two new formats that have come up and you know where they're headed and whether they'll overtake print as the new book format. So today, I'm talking to Vaishnavi Singh. She started out as an editorial and publicity intern seven years ago. And now she's the head of digital at Penguin Random House India. So we discuss how digital platforms have become so integral to all aspects of publishing through audiobooks and ebooks, obviously, but also in production and in marketing of books. And we also chat about how there's this huge opportunity in audio now, whether it's through audiobooks or podcasts, and how publishers need to keep adapting to these new formats and to these like new emerging social media platforms. And she also talks about what kind of digital experimentation she hopes to see in the future in uh, publishing or in content in general. So if you're wondering whether to stick to print or whether to get your book into the digital formats, then this episode is definitely for you. And if you're looking for more free resources to understand the publishing industry or the podcasting world better, then we've got two super insightful research documents for you that we have actually released this year. So the first is our publishing industry document called Demystifying Indian Publishing. And the other is our new podcast production document or guidebook called Ear to the Ground, which includes our predictions on the future of podcasts in India. And both of these have have been co-written by me. So, and both of these resources are free. So you can download them using the links in our show note or in the description. But right now, let's have a chat with Vaishnavi and let's see what ebooks and audiobooks are all about and whether they can really replace print books in the near future. Let's dive in. Hi, Vaishnavi. Welcome to the book, people. Hi, hi, Ashwarya. Lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. So, Vaishnavi, you are so heavily involved in, you know, creating digital content, whether it's audiobooks or ebooks or whether it's just promoting books digitally. So, I think the first question that I want to ask you is, are books going digital? Yes, I think they are. I think uh, for us, uh, you know, it's very important that people just read books, you know, whatever format they do like, uh, whether yeah. it's a paperback or print editions, as you might call it, or, you know, ebooks or audio. For us, it's very important that people are reading. And for me personally, it's really great to see that people have now started downloading more ebooks, um, you know, downloading audiobooks. And I think instant gratification has a big role to play in that because now people want to read immediately. A new book is coming out. Now they realize, okay, maybe here I should just download it or I should listen to, you know, the author narrating his own book or her own book, right? So I think that's definitely played a huge part, especially in the times you are in. Um, you know, and um, so I've, we've seen some uptick. We've definitely seen some growth here. Uh, ebooks, of course, uh, are priced differently than audiobooks. Um, yeah. And the production costs are, of course, very different, which I can take you into details if you'd like to know more. Uh, but um, the best part about this is that people are now more uh, responsive to audio formats. You see the growth of Clubhouse, you see Facebook wanting to make more audio. It's like companionship, really. You're cooking alone, you're in lockdown, uh, but you have this audiobook playing while you're in the kitchen uh, or you're doing some other activity, right? Uh, and audiobook is there to sort of just help you. So books have really become digital. Books have really become your companion, like they have always been, right? Uh, the best yeah. friend you need, literally. And I yeah. think it's just an adaptation of that. And um, for me, I think when the numbers show it that way, when audiobooks are doing well in the country, I feel really thrilled about the fact that I'm a little tiny part in this audio universe. (laughs) Of making this happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree because, you know, I have also started listening to audiobooks more during the pandemic. I mean, I don't think before the pandemic, I 
had ever even tried listening to an audio book to see what that would be like because i think the attachment to print was so strong and i feel like a lot of people are still like that where you know they would rather if given the choice have a print book because it's just different to read when like you're sort of feeling the pages in your hands or whatever yeah. but audio books and ebooks are very 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 convenient and i also end up doing this where i'm sort of doing other things or i'm just in fact when i'm listening to audio books i end up like arranging things or organizing things or cleaning my room more than i would usually just because like my hands need something to do while i'm listening to an audio book right so yeah. audio books have been really really great for me yeah. but um like you said right there's sort of this difference between the pricing of ebooks and audio books and i'm sure there's a lot of difference in also the production of it right so can you just like tell me a little bit about what that is like and you know what your role involves in sort of the production of ebooks and audio books so my um role in ebooks really is the promotion aspect of it and running deals <laughs> and making sure that people have you know mo- uh, people are really aware about the fact that an ebook version also exists and we do some yeah. really cool stuff with kindle like you know featured articles they make our authors you know author of the month push notifications are sent out so i think kindle is doing a great job in making sure that people are aware about this format that exists uh, as far as audiobook is concerned that those are produced by me and my team entirely um, and uh, you know it's choosing the right book it's also choosing the right narrator that takes a lot of work to know what kind of yeah. voice actually uh, suits a certain kind of book and uh, yeah because i've noticed sometimes audiobooks i mean especially for non fiction sometimes they're narrated by the author and yeah. i think that only happens when the author is someone super super popular or well established yeah. but most of the times they're sort of narrated by someone else right audio books really are an art form because you get you hire an artist who records this for you gets into a studio is spending about more than 12 to 16 hours to record something that finally will only be an 8 hour long book you know so they yeah. are really so it is really an art form it's a uh, it's a lot of production work uh it's not purely just recording then there's post production where you're mastering might somebody might have made a mistake there's breathing noises all those technicalities come into play right um and uh, with authors of course you know sometimes if it's somebody's personal story uh it only makes sense to have them narrate their own audiobook right um yeah. so if it's priyanka chopra doing unfinished and it's in her voice it brings that charm she's talking about her own life it's a memoir uh there's a personal connection there because she's literally it feels like she's sitting in front of you and telling you a story but i've seen that sometimes when i'm listening to an audio book it mm-hmm. seems like uh the um while producing the audio book some thought has gone into how uh the experience of listening to this book would be different from the experience of reading this book you know what mm-hmm. i mean so there seems to be uh, that there are some additions or there is sort of some background score or some of these audio elements added or even sort of uh, um lines or sentences that the host is sort of reading out that are included to make it a more sort of auditory experience rather than a reading experience if that makes sense yes absolutely you're right and we call them dramatized versions right we did one of uh, sudha murthy's books uh, last year which was our first audio only release uh, because it came with the ebook and the, because we were under lockdown so yes of course i think it has to be um, you know something that brings a life in front of you as you're hearing it and uh, i'm proud of this one book called the puffin mahabharat by uh, namita gokhale and we had mr sunit tandon record this audio book right he's a theater artist he has brought that book to life it's almost like arjun and karan and you just stood right in front of you <laughs> right he's brought draupadi to life he's brought every character in that book to life um with just his voice and voice modulation and making sure that narrator has a different kind of uh, way of speaking and the characters have their own voices so he's really done a very good job now of course this right. second stage in an audiobook is definitely a dramatized version whether you have something as big as sandman where you have a different cast all together you have all it's a basically a movie uh, yeah. without <laughs> the visuals and i think yeah. uh, while as audiobooks we haven't sort of been able to experiment that much in india yet 
uh, but i think what brings to my mind uh, what this brings to my mind really is you know when we were younger i don't know if you have ever heard there were cassettes of like shole <laughs> and you know i had no idea no yeah so i remember i was like about 6 7 years old and i was at our neighbor's house and i saw a cassette and shole was there and i don't know if it's if he if that person recorded the movie or they were selling it like that i have no idea but i really have a very mem- like i have a categorically sound memory of this that i played it i was like what is this and there was all the sound effects all of that and was like the entire audio. soundtrack of the movie yeah. with all the sound effects with all the songs with, and with her nose footsteps yeah all of it <laughs> in india like i think that audio books might have come late to us but i think our auditory senses have been on for so long i mean we used to listen to cricket matches on radio before we could yeah. actually watch it so i think yeah, no i was uh, actually thinking of radio you know before you mentioned shole because i was also thinking of these uh, you know these short plays or these short sort of enactments like short stories that are enacted that ha- used to happen on the radio and stuff like that and audio books do are sort of reminiscent of that right because oral storytelling for us has been so important right uh, whether it was before we started using paper and you had to memorize everything that you were studying to your grandmother's telling a bedtime story and remembering those and uh, so i think like we as a country can adapt really well to audio books and i think that's showing in this lockdown right so can you uh, tell me what has the shift really been like you know uh, pre pandemic to now what kind of uh, an an increase have you seen especially at penguin in terms of the sale of audio books so i am not sure about how many numbers can i share but i can just tell you that it's more than double triple it's definitely way beyond that in terms of yeah. the growth we've seen uh, but yes but i think there are certain genres that the indian audience responds well to and more often than not uh, for the time being it's very similar mm-hmm. to what's happening in the print industry so unfinished was a best seller and unfinished was on audible's uh, top selling charts as well and life's amazing secrets perennial best seller for us right both in print and audio formats so yeah. so what about the like trends in terms of genres though like what genres are doing well right now during the pandemic in both print and audio self help non fiction definitely absolutely i can imagine that because that's i have been consuming a lot of that <laughs> in audio format just because it's i feel like it's easier to do that in audio somehow than to read a physical book yeah when it comes yeah. to self help non fiction that's great insight i think that's great insight and i'm going to use that uh insight in the next time my ceo feel asks, free Why to is use it, it? <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to tell him it's sure from the bound told me that's really interesting insight and i think that's true <laughs> I think it is because I think I would read a Jhumpa Lahiri as a proper print edition. I'll take my time to absorb it. I might want to reread a sentence, um, you know, because it's yeah, it touches you in ways you don't even realize. And I feel like in audio, that's a little more difficult to do, just because I mean, obviously you can rewind, so technically you can do it. But to hold on to or relish certain moments or certain sentences becomes more difficult. And I feel like for that, I need print and I need to like. underline yeah. things and make notes and put sticky notes and stuff absolutely no of course i mean i can't take that away i mean as a reader personally as well i love hearing and listening to audio books but i also love having a book in my hands and reading it at bedtime yes can you just tell me what other genres are you know doing really well in terms of audio books so mythology mythology is a big one uh, biographies of people uh, whether it's a biography of sardar patel to savarkar uh, doing really really well and um business books do really well so some of our best sellers are unusual billionaires let's build a company um and uh, now i'm the right choice by shiv shiv kumar is coming out and we'll see how well that does as well it's very interesting because you know um because currently i am very much into podcasts and you know that sort of what i'm doing in terms of my work and my role and those are actually also um the kind of podcast that do really well hmm. so you know in india like mythology in non fiction especially so mythology or uh, more than business i would say like a combination of business and self help where it's more sort of self development yeah. podcast like oh either developing habits or 
um figuring out marketing like those kind of podcasts are doing really really well so that's very interesting to see also those similarities right because again yeah. two audio formats that people are consuming a lot of during the pandemic yeah uh, oh, but also consumer trends more or less sort of merge at some point right um yeah it's possible that the people who are listening to podcasts are the same people who are listening to an audiobook or or that conversion has happened more quickly because they're used yeah. to listening anyway a uh, conversion from a print uh, book might be a little difficult to an audiobook right i mean i'm just guessing it's just i i would just think that that's possible it's like if i'm going on netflix do i want to watch a like a series a tv show where i watch it in like episodic format and it's sort of shorter episodes okay. or do i watch like a film i mean mm-hmm. obviously audiobooks are much longer than a film would ever be but i feel like it's it's that sort of thing of do i want some information in sort of these smaller bite sized things or do i want to uh, do i want the same information in sort of um, in much more depth in a I, an audiobook format at right. least that's the way i look at it when i am sort of deciding what to listen to i don't know if everyone does that i don't want to speak for everyone no but i think um, you at bound know the readers very well but you know coming back to production of audiobooks because uh, so when i was doing my internship at simon and schuster canada mm-hmm. something that i um realized or was told was that you know at the end of the day it's very very expensive to produce audiobooks mm-hmm. so at least what they used to do or i think some publishers do even in india is that they pick and choose which books which print books to then even produce as audiobooks right or which print books are worth converting into audiobooks and putting out there based on whether they think they will do well or not so what is sort of your process or you know what is penguin's process when it comes to this like do you convert all your books or if you have a process to pick and choose how do you do that okay so i think for us um the the aim is to convert every book into an audio format right that is the aim uh, we are just nascent in our uh, audio productions right now that we have to prioritize one over the other so it's never that oh this book will never be yeah. an audio book it's just not yet uh, mm-hmm. let us focus on the genres that are selling right now and push them out because there's a demand for it we are really thinking about uh, you know making sure the kind of books that our audience likes to listen to are already available to them so that they don't feel that that isn't there and mm-hmm. then of course balance it out with books that we'd like people to listen to you know uh yeah where well, we are passionate about uh we are investing more time and uh, making sure it's an artwork right so it's really a balanced view for us definitely yeah um what does a day or a week in your work life look like you know because obviously you're doing all of these multiple things and you're you know managing ebooks you're doing audio books you're also doing screen rights Yes, right yeah, as yeah. well as a little bit of digital marketing so how do you sort of balance all of these things how are they are they linked to each other yeah no um so the more and more i spend uh, you know on newsletters to social media to audio to video rights i think it's all sort of merged and integrated right uh, you can't do one thing without without the other um i also look after the website or the blog pieces that go on it and mm-hmm. if you're running a newsletter program then the newsletter needs content that might be there on the website which is cre- getting created based on a book you're marketing so it's really coming together right it, yeah. it is all interconnected so it's a lot of thinking like that um but how my day in the week looks like uh i'm sp- i i mean honestly like i have to have my hands in different things at all times right and yeah. which i really enjoy uh, it's exciting in the sense that you are always thinking about how to use a certain format that you're responsible for in the best way possible for the book and that is yeah. what gets me up in the morning my okay. friend made a joke once and she said that your designation is a bunch of commas right? <laughs> my yeah yeah i've noticed that, that it is <laughs> yeah. yeah but um, I think uh, that's what wakes me up in the morning every day. It's a new day. Every day is a new day in digital and um it's yeah. it makes me want to hide under the table sometimes because the algorithm changes, something 
that you were doing as a format does not work anymore and um, and you're constantly thinking about should i get on clubhouse as a brand uh, mm. should i be using uh, that to promote audiobooks i can relate to this so much because you know i agree with what you said about content as well because i feel like i am also noticing and at bound we are noticing this sort of fluidity of content right like you said ki something can be a book it can be a podcast it can be a newsletter and it can flow between these things and then some things work across multiple platforms some don't and just being able to gauge and say okay this is what this works really well in and then sort of figuring those things out are some is something that you know i am currently super super interested in so yeah. it's yeah it's like it's really great to also hear that from you but also what you said about you know um, having to constantly be on your feet and sort of constantly be on the lookout for what is changing what is new what do we need to adapt to now is absolutely relatable because again with podcast right it's like oh what is uh, apple podcast coming up with a new thing is spotify is coming up with a new thing and then just sort of it's so exciting to sort of keep up with technology to keep up with trends and i feel like that adaptability is a lot of fun because every day feels like it's a different day which yeah. is like you said it's like you either want to hide under the table or <laughs> you want to you feel like you're like conquering the world and that feeling is really amazing yeah when i see engagement drop i'm literally like oh my god <laughs> what what's not working I also want to talk about your journey, you know, because you entered publishing, I would say, six to seven years ago. About yeah, seven years in August. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, within seven years, you've sort of come so far, and you're now the sort of digital head of Penguin Random House, and you're overseeing so many things. So, what has that journey been like for you? Yeah. And so- you know, if you could give any insights for people who want to. enter the industry what would those be so i entered publishing 7 years ago uh, i interned first i interned when it was in penguin random house it was just random house and i had the best bosses that i would come back and work for i wanted to be an editor i really did uh, i used to love reading books i was writing a book when i was in grade 11 this is i just wanted to edit books and publish them that's really i wanted to do uh, yes. luck is just that my luck was such that uh, when i came into my internship they realized that editorial was overbooked i had the luck seriously to intern for two weeks under publicity two weeks under editorial and then make my choice that okay now i yeah. want to pursue marketing and publicity instead of editorial and uh, i was a history honors graduate everybody including my parents expected either i was going to be an is officer i was going to go try that uh i was going to do my jnu masters and i'm not saying this in a demeaning manner right but it's just that when you there was a huge stereotype when you were a history honors graduate um you nobody thought you were going to go and switch over to marketing right yeah. you would go it's into sort of this expected path that is charted yeah. yeah so so i thought that stereotypically my career choices were just one of these right i also wanted to be a journalist at one point and that's how sort of after graduating i um was looking for a job i applied to a lot of places it just happened so that penguin had a op- position open at the time went through a bunch of interviews got in and uh, i was a marketing assistant i really was doing everything nobody else wanted to do i was booking everybody's travel and stay i was raising purchase orders i was um the best part of my job that time and uh, i think that's when i became a publicist 6 months into the job and i was handling books from different genres i was doing a book called the cauliflower diet to audrey trushke's book i worked on and uh, hidden life of trees i was finding myself to have a digitally bent mindset right when it comes to marketing yeah. and i didn't notice this you know my bosses did uh, my ceo did uh hmm. before this though of course before the switch happened i had sort of taken on instagram and building that as a passion project i wasn't asked to was not my role at all uh but i just felt that instagram could be really um good for us and i started penguins instagram i think in 2016 uh right. so 
you saw so, that opportunity like you saw that this was going to be something that would be good for marketing or something that would be sort of in the long term yeah no i think i yeah i i mean i didn't think that far i honestly at like what 2016 i wasn't thinking that that strategically i was just thinking that here's this platform it's definitely growing and i'm on it my friends are on it so why shouldn't penguin be on it as well you know yeah people are reading books are on it and the younger audience is there uh, that's all i thought and uh, i'm really really grateful to penguin for that because they saw that and uh, gave me the opportunity i didn't even know i wanted so um what insights would you have for people who are thinking of getting into publishing you know and who are not sure of how to do that or um even what to do within publishing i think the best way to find out is really get an internship right um i yeah. think plan ahead a lot of internships and editorial sort of go away very quickly i think yeah. when people think of publishing they automatically think of being an editor yeah because that's sort of the strong yeah. association that people have with what even a career in publishing yeah. could look like yes yeah. so exactly so that's why i think that is why uh, they run out so fast but having said that publishing has so many segments as marketing the sales uh, there is children's publishing which is completely separate from publishing for books for adults um, and yeah. then there is of course finance it customer service um, you know so it's a full company coming together to really uh, rally behind a book right so i think internships are a great way to find out uh, what you're really good at i mean of course there's also hr right so uh, yeah. your career path um, you know your you can be you don't have to be an industry expert you don't have to be just pub- about publishing you could be an engineer who wants to do marketing i mean i literally had a colleague who was an engineer before got into advertising came to marketing and you can then of course get to know people you can you know reach out to them for more information and that's always a good way everybody loves having mentees i think everybody would love to have a chat i think it's about reaching out i think the young yeah. kids today uh, really need to use linkedin to their advantage um, right and not be afraid of cold emailing i think send out your cv um, tell people why you want to work in publishing and why that function you know when you yeah. just say i want an internship and you don't know what a publishing house may comprise of um or what you really want to do in that internship that mm-hmm. people don't people then think that you want the brand as much as uh, not and not as much really um the division so if you love social media and you love books then reach out to the person at penguin or any other publishing house and tell them that why do you think that you want to experience that and how that is um yeah. you love editorial reach out but just reach out and find out more about publishing from things like yeah. what the bound is doing right uh, yeah. you're really demystifying in in publishing and i think that's a big win for every young candidate out there yeah i think that especially is so important because you know it's not just um students or fresh graduates who are sort of thinking of careers but especially at bound we're seeing so many people from different fields or different careers who want to maybe make a switch or are trying to figure out what they can do around writing or publishing or editing and i think that is why that becomes super important right the fact that there are so many of these other roles where you could still be you know an hr person or you could still be sort of um like you could take your legal expertise for example or you could take yeah. your financial expertise and that background and still get into this industry because there are so many different kinds of roles available here which are not just editorial yeah. and, and i work i closely with legal for example for video yeah. rights because you're working on agreements i for the life of me i had no idea what indemnity meant but now <laughs> i do cuz yeah you know you're working with legal and and uh, and books are read by legal before they go out into the world like when i was thinking about what i want to do with my life you know publishing in that sense seems really exciting but you really don't get an idea of what it is like unless you do an internship like for me that was i did an internship at zuban mm-hmm. books oh wow i think in 2017 okay yeah and after that that's when i was like okay i know that i love editorial and i know that i love publishing and you know i want to do something around that so i think what you said about how you got to do two weeks with editorial and two weeks with publicity 
yeah. is also so important because in that sense in one internship you got to try out multiple things right to yeah. then decide and say okay this is what i like more or this is what i fit into more because that fits with what i want to do and what excites me about books absolutely so, absolutely yeah super important to have those experiences and just try different things to figure out what we fit into as well yeah um but i want to know from you what to you is you know what is the best part of your role or of working at penguin random house working in publishing for you i think the best part is that you get to meet so many people with such diverse ways of writing dif- diverse opinions i think the best part is that you have to have an open mind right um yeah. you meet so many different people and you learn so much from them uh the good part about working with publishing really is that uh, you know you're behind you're working in a creative field i think and every new book that comes out you have to start from scratch it's always a new book different target audience um the campaign will looks absolutely different and um uh, yeah. and it's exciting it's challenging but it's very exciting because you have so many products coming out in a month so and you have to be creative about it so i love donning that creative hat just being around creative people and just seeing creativity where you know you con- it's like every conversation you're having with a person is creative and then there are other people around you just doing creative things and it just always puts you in that mindset of feeling this sort of yeah. almost being in a semi inspired <laughs> creative like creation state of mind always and i think that's you know i because that's how i feel every day when i'm at work and it's just a really really great feeling to have irrespective yeah. of whether you actually end up doing anything creative that day or not yeah. but it's just a good feeling to be around and yeah, it's to be good. it's very positive yeah yeah so in terms of marketing because you know something that we also noticed is when the pandemic hit right obviously digital marketing has been important since quite some time but especially during the pandemic when a lot of other things were shut uh publishing houses really had to adapt and do a lot to more things digitally in terms of putting their books out or in terms of marketing their books so what was that shift like for you or like what are some things or trends that you have noticed over the past couple of years in the digital uh, space yeah i think uh, the first thing that you couldn't do anymore was word events right or uh, you couldn't have yeah. any book launches um you couldn't i mean books were not essential and they were not being uh, you know shipped so that was a huge challenge so yeah immediately we had to adapt very quickly to those formats like ebooks and audio and uh, the digitally the switch we made was uh, and was a very easy one right we just started um, posting pictures or uh, of ebooks or created a kindle store uh, where people could see all penguin books in one place uh, so we start making those marketing switch um, switches right very easily and the marketing team as well they also came and uh, and really accepted virtual events right they partnered with moms press to reach out to parents somebody partnered with kids stop press um we went back and did a few one or two videos of ours were covered by brute so we really found more partnerships coming up right where um, you were really looking at digital not just a mere function of running ads or posting you know one book trailer video but actually creating a sense of community making conversations happen and i think the pandemic definitely pushed us that way lots of micro influencers and influencers have become important um and um, so that continues uh, and penguin becomes more authentic in that sense as a brand we have also seen this trend a little bit where you know uh, ebook and audiobook sales really went up when the pandemic started but then once print books were back i think ebook sales sort of plateaued so what do you see i mean i personally feel like i i'm not sure where ebooks are headed because obviously people are reading ebooks but then there is this whole um concern of you know just like uh, screen fatigue which is something i am facing as well where i am finding it difficult to read ebooks because i'm spending so much time anyways looking at a screen that i sort of prefer either just 
like a different medium either just listening to the books or you know actual physical books so sort of taking all of these different things in consideration where do you see ebooks and audio books in the next 5 years yeah i think um, ebooks is definitely something that i feel is going to stay where it is honestly it's a very personal opinion i think it's going to stay um it has stayed there was a time where people thought that ebooks uh, me ebooks is going to kill print books and i don't think that's going to happen um yeah the numbers don't show it um i think ebook is just a nice addition to print um mm-hmm. you know it's just that audio can give it a tough one and i and i say this as completely in my personal opinion because uh, as audio sort of improves um you know with what ha- can happen with audio is that potential hasn't been tapped into yet you know you haven't tapped into amitabh bachchan narrating a audio books you know mixing the yeah. books in bollywood oh, that would uh, be or a full, yeah or a full cast i think audible so no did get amitabh bachchan for a show uh, mm-hmm. but imagine if your budgets were that high one day the kind of potential there is and you have a cast um, or tomorrow netflix decides to do i'm going to do dramatic versions of audio books uh, but with a full cast from bollywood and i'm just saying i'm just doing like i'm just saying it out in the open right just a few ideas yeah yeah because single voice straight reading i still understand people don't want to listen to it all the time but if you just do sandman type productions over and over again um yeah then you might just say that okay maybe people start enjoying that more because then you're away from um straining your eyes in any format right any any way um mm-hmm. so i'm just saying that if you ask me in 5 years there's a lot of potential in the world of audio books i mean i think now there are ai companies who are coming out and saying we can make the ai sound more like a person taking pauses and breaks and a little bit more mm-hmm. of like breath breaks and stuff like that we haven't explored it uh it's very new but i'm just saying in the next 5 years you might even reduce costs uh using ai and uh, and then who knows audio as a format can even pick up so pick up more so i'm just saying there's so much potential in audio books because it's just so new and yeah, there's a uh, lot to be explored yeah so um yeah. i would never say that one format is going to take out the other that's not going to happen uh i just think that in the next 5 years audio is going to have a lot more um going on for it as a format than it is than it has right now if i have to just think about the us they win grammys for their audio books i mean that's where they've gone with audio yeah. so why not for india absolutely it's always better to adapt right and it's always interesting to see how things can grow and develop and become into newer things than sort of mm-hmm. see even something like netflix right i mean seeing netflix as a threat or seeing anything as a threat because i feel like those conversations of oh our books dying <laughs> are so common right? because every new thing that comes up becomes a yeah. potential threat where you're like oh does this mean the end of books but then they never yeah. do that which yeah, is i don't thing. think so because yeah. and, and plus netflix i mean you know when sacred games came out people you know we see it as a marketing opportunity really because no matter what when you watch a series and you realize it's based on a book you will want to pick up the book because it yeah. has so many more details than the show does and could be very mm-hmm. different um Absolutely. so i love talking to the you know the content world um whether it's netflix hotstar and what kind of shows are working for them and etc etc to pitch books to them because that's also what i do and yeah. um you get great insight into that kind of uh, you know creative world as well a writer's work adapted to the screen i mean it's a win win situation for everyone okay so that brings us to sort of the final section of this okay. Okay. Podcast episode where we're gonna do a fun rapid fire round. Oh, okay. What are you reading right now? I'm reading the Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. I just started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm reading uh, the Case of the Exploding Mangoes by Mohammad Hanif. Mohammad Hanif, oh, love that book. Love that book. Yeah. 
love yeah. honey I'm just starting it now i've heard so, so much about it for so long i was like i have to find yeah, it and pick it up yeah, yeah the way he uses the, like the satire to just you know his advantage is beautiful i love mohammed hanis yeah good choice yeah uh one publishing myth that you would like to bust that uh we don't know how to do digital nice okay um one audiobook that you would absolutely recommend indians listen to the puffin mahabharat by namita gokhale sunil tandon at his best amazing work okay and my final question is if you weren't working in publishing what would you do mm i would uh Oh God, I've never thought about it. It's, it's just like second nature or something. Or uh, uh, no, I think I would be in. Um, I would be. I would love to be a chef. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Mm. You must be a great cook then. I'm a decent cook when I put my mind to it. If I was, <laughs> if I had to be trained, I could have been better. but i can make a great curry like chicken curry and uh, and i can follow instructions really well so my mother g- gives me instructions and i do a good job and uh, the yeah. best compliment i've ever received from my brother or my family really is who are by the way very critical of everything that i do um <laughs> is yeah. that i i cook uh, chicken curry uh, absolutely similar to my mother's so that, that is, is a huge point. compliment all right so thank you so much vaishnavi for joining me here on the book people and talking to me about all of these things and answering all of my questions about audiobooks ebooks digital because that is something that i have been curious about for a really long time so thank you so much thank you so much for having me it was a total pleasure so that was vaishnavi singh talking about her journey in publishing and how it's so important today to see content as something that's fluid and flexible and can be converted into a book a podcast a newsletter or any other format and as the head of content and podcast at bound i definitely see the appeal of this kind of thing so this brings us to the end of the first season of the book people i hope you enjoyed this episode and that you loved geeking out about books and podcasts as much as i did This series is brought to you by Bound, a company that helps you tell your stories. And you can find us at Bound India on all our social media platforms. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to download either of our free documents on publishing or podcasting, you can find the links for that in the show note or the description below. Thank you for tuning into the Book People. I am Ashwarya, and I'll be back soon with a new season with new guests and new book questions to discuss. Until then I wish you all the best on your publishing journey and don't forget to keep reading